my name's Kelly and we're out here in my vegetable garden and today we're going to be digging up my potatoes. So here is the row of potatoes. The end of the row is where that potato fork is stabbed in. Growing up I used to think potatoes were the most fun vegetable to harvest by far because it was like digging for treasure. You didn't know what you were going to get until you stuck your hands in the soil. And then started gardening in different types of soil and it wasn't quite as magical, especially here in this garden, which I've been trying to grow potatoes the last three years in and it is 100% clay. So it's like cement when it's dry and like, well, like wet cement when it's wet. In order to work with clay soil, it has to have like this kind of in-between perfect moisture for it to even be possible. <laughs> I've been trying to figure it out how to grow these potatoes in clay. So as you can see, most of the vines are starting to die back. And up here, they've completely died back. And that is how I know they are ready to dig up. Also, I know it's time because I've seen squirrels digging them up and I want to eat these potatoes. The first year, we tried the traditional like digging a trench, plopping the potatoes in and then you hill them up. And when the potatoes were ready to dig up, they were just so hard to get out of the ground. We had potatoes sprouting in the peas the next year because we missed so many that got stuck in the clay. Wow. It's fun to just feel around in here and there's a lot. Like a lot. Oh my goodness. Hi Chester. So the next year I dug a trench and I threw straw in there with them thinking that would make it fluffier, it would decompose, it would be easier to dig them out. Don't do that unless you know for 100% sure that this straw is organic or spray free because all other straw will have herbicides and pesticides in it. <laughs> Out of a whole 50 foot row, I maybe had two sprout. The straw had killed all the other potatoes. Nothing grew. Will you come Listen, closer? listen to this. I'm not gonna have that. Oh, Chester, are you gonna dig potatoes with me? So then this year, tried something completely different. I laid about four to six inches of unfinished compost on top of the bed. All right, so I'm flipping the compost pile again. And I just stuck the potato into the compost and didn't even dig into the ground at all. Just stuck it into the compost. And then as the season went along and the potatoes were growing, I added more material, just whatever we had, like when the sweet potato, or not sweet potatoes, sweet peas were done, I added those vines. That's what that is. I also had a huge bag of peat moss that I had bought a couple years ago for starting seeds. So I threw that on there and just added more material as I had it available, kind of hilling, hilling the potatoes. And I already harvested part of this row and let me tell you, it has been magical. Besides, well there's one, the squirrels are getting into them. Oh, that's so disappointing. All chewed up. Oh. That's a walnut. Who knew that would be an issue, but besides the squirrels, the potatoes have been super easy to dig out. It's super soft. So this is another cool part about mulching potatoes is look at these cool fungus growing in here. I think that's part of why they did so well. There's a lot of little roots, a lot of mycelium, which is like this white. That's like mushroom roots. And that's really healthy for the soil and really healthy for the plants. And I see it all over in here. So like this is what the potatoes are growing in, or were. Okay, Chester. <laughs> so that's probably like a good four to six inches till I get to the clay, which is actually a lot softer because of the mulch. It's very moist and crumbly. Whereas when it's exposed, 
it gets hard, it can crack. It's just harder to deal with. So this, I am very satisfied. This is what I got from two plants so far. And they're big. These are big for red potatoes, I think. This is much easier. I'm not even gonna, not even needing to use the potato fork. Look at this little baby. Ew, what was that? That was some kind of big bug. Can you see that? These ones are smaller. They're also, the tops are still green. Maybe I should wait to dig those ones up. Yeah, these are a lot smaller. Look at, this is what the squirrels have been doing. They've been chewing these. So yeah, then after you dig them up, you can leave them, set them back on top of the bed to kind of dry out in the sun for a few hours or a few days, depending on how, how well you trust your squirrels. dug up you need to let them cure which is just basically letting the the thin skin on the outside of the potato kind of harden and protect the potato so that they don't rot in storage so the book that I reference for vegetable growing says that you can leave the potatoes on the ground until the soil on them dries and then just brush the the soil off gently oh but don't wash them you don't wash potatoes until you're ready to use them and they need to cure for about two weeks at about 55 degrees Fahrenheit in a humid condition and then you want to store them at about 40 degrees in a root cellar I don't have a root cellar we have a basement but it's much warmer than 40 degrees and we've tried storing potatoes down there before and they always sprout so I don't know what we're gonna do we're just gonna try and use them up faster I guess so this is how Mother Nature lets you know you're done with tomatoes for the season, I guess. See, I was making dinner and I looked out the window and I heard a and I saw this limb just fall. No surprise because there's this giant dead tree just hanging over the entire garden. I look ghostly. This lighting is terrible. It's like noon. And I almost didn't grow potatoes this year because we've had such bad luck in the past, but I'm glad that we did because I just noticed the last month or two that organic potatoes have been really expensive at the store. Like a little three pound bag is almost $5, which isn't the most expensive food, but for potatoes that seems expensive. And I definitely like to get organic potatoes because potatoes are one of the dirty dozen, which have been tested to have high levels of chemicals on them when they're grown conventionally. And I've seen commercially grown potato fields where they, they're growing hundreds of acres of potatoes at a time and they come through and they they spray the chemicals from an airplane every week like fungicides pesticides things like that and literally and i i've seen this they from frito-lay they come with an airplane and spray acres of potatoes every week chemicals from the sky so i prefer to have organic potatoes <laughs> Another fun fact about my potato growing this year is we did not have any issues with potato beetles. We could have just got lucky with not having potato beetles, but what I think it is is we have trees all around the garden and a pretty healthy population of birds that visit in here. Like there's bird poop on a lot of things, so I and I think that's the main reason I've not really had pest issues is these birds come and they eat bugs. I see, well they also come and eat other birds because I will see like a floof of feathers where a hawk ate another bird. 
And also another reason I think we didn't have any issues is I divided up my row of potatoes with other crops and there's other crops around the potatoes. So there's a lot of diversity in a small space, a lot of flowers that attract other types of insects. And I think all of that helped, but also maybe it was just luck and like the time that I planted them. So I did, pl I did get them in the ground a little bit late, so that could have something to do with it, but who knows, but I just I got pretty lucky with no pest issues on potatoes this year, which is almost unheard of. If you do have potato beetles, they're easy enough to deal with. It's just as soon as you notice them, you pick them off, or you can squish them, or you can get a bucket of water and just bloop them into the water and they'll drown. So this is my fifth year either growing my own vegetable garden or working at a vegetable farm. I still definitely consider myself a beginner gardener. Even though I've been doing it for several years, there's just so much to learn and I just learn so much just through experience each year. It's something I'm really passionate about, growing healthy food, being connected with your food and being connected to the land and doing good for the environment and for your body. So if that's something you are also passionate about or also wanting to learn about, please subscribe and hit the little bell to be notified when I upload my videos to follow along on my little gardening journey. The hope is that someday I would have my own land. This is not land I own. I'm growing food here on someone else's land. This is what making your dreams come true looks like. It's not waiting until the perfect situation. It's doing what you can with what you have. Thanks for hanging out with me today. We'll see you in the next video.